So what we've got, uh, I don't know if you can see the audience, there's um, several people here. You may or may not recognise, no this is Callie. So, so Callie, what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring up your first slide if that's okay. Yep. Um, from the beginning, so I've got, a, I've got your first slide up. Uh, just take your time. Title, slide or capacity structure. So, and then the first one's on capacity and structure. Okay, then. Okay, so I'm Callie Jarvis, the operations manager here in the UK for Kings Mill Hospital. I'm just going to talk to you about the capacity that we um, deliver and how we structure that. So we manage our capacity on a point system, one point equal in 15 minutes. So for gastroscopies, we use one point, plexisigmoidoscopy is two, colonoscopy three, and the therapeutic procedures are three points plus. The largest of which I've seen has been a six point procedure, um, which has been around two and a half to three hours. Um, all the referrals are graded by the consultants, and this can vary depending on the consultant doing the job to their individual capability, skill set and previous experience of such procedures. So as a booking team, follow the guidance of the consultants to book in our patients. Here at our hospital, the endoscopy unit runs a three session day, Monday to Friday, and a two session day on Saturdays. The morning operates with 12 points, afternoon with 10, and the evenings with nine points. Can I have the next slide please, Paul? Yep. Okay, so now Sorry. you should be able to see our timetable. This is just a structure of our morning. So we use a colour coding system, which allows me to highlight the dedicated lists for priority patients. The yellow lists there are for our suspected cancer patients. The purple lists are dedicated training lists, which we allocate registrars to come and scope along with a consultant during their time with us. Uh, the unit runs across two sites, which is Kings Mill and Newark. So the first three rooms all relate to the Kings Mill department, which is the larger suite, and Newark operates on a one room. Um, so this master timetable here is just a snapshot of the morning session for one week. You'll notice that not all the Callie, lists running are allocated. Kelly, I've got one question for you. Just one second. Yes. So, the, on, on Tuesday morning. so ERCP, how yeah. many points are allocated to ERCP? How many ERCPs? Yeah, uh, so you have three points for e each ERCP, correct? Yes. So why do you have 10? That means three ERCPs plus one point extra, is that, is that a spare period that you give or what is it? Because you're talking about 45 minutes each, right, for ERCP? Yes. On a morning list, we will see uh, three routine ERCPs and then we save one slot for an inpatient ERCP. Okay. So in total, we'll scope four ERCP patients. Thank you very much, Kelly. Thank you. And where was I? Um, so yes, I was just saying, you'll see that not all of the uh, consultants are allocated 12 points and that is a reflection of how we um, skill set people up. And if they're not up to the time and speed, we'll just reduce their points until they feel more comfortable and Paul's reassess them. And then we up their points to match everybody else as they gain more experience. Next slide, please. Yes, Kelly. So to manage the booking system, I work with a admin team. Um, and this consists of eight booking clerks, which is the booking team, the admin team leader, and then myself who sits at the top. So we coordinate the capacity and demand by um, looking at the waiting list and comparing it with the timetable and the slots available. And then liaise with my admin team leader and advise of the patients of where they need to be allocated. And then she feeds back sure 
allow seven days for urgents, six weeks for routine diagnostics, and planned surveillance patients or repeats are all booked within six weeks of their due, due date. And we ensure that runs smoothly and everyone's booked within their time frame. Next slide, Paul. Demand. Yes, thank you. So looking at the demand, how I work that out, if you look at the top section, that shows me what currently is on our waiting list. So for this month in October, we have 388 colons, 406 gases, which equates to 795 points. You can see from the capacity scheduled below, I only have a total of 356 points available. So the difference is um, minus 439 points. So what I do is I work with the consultants and the department lead and we work together to see what extra lists we can put on using the uh, capacity at weekends. So working together, we've managed to schedule an extra 44 lists running um, two lists, well, two rooms on a Saturday and two rooms on a Sunday, which gives us a plus of one point. And that will be able enable us to see all our planned routines in October, date all our cancer patients within seven days, all our routine targets within six weeks, and also allow us to see um, inpatients within 24 hours of receipt of referral. Paul, next slide, please. Cost. Thank you. So for each procedure, there is a set tariff of each one has three elements to it straightforward diagnostics diagnostics with biopsies a therapeutic when forecasting the income i have used a weighted average of the three prices dependent on previous activity levels which you can see illustrated on the slide there in the last column the trust incurs a financial penalty for each patient that breaches their six-week target and it's paramount the capacity and demand to ensure the financial penalties are minimal to ensure the best patient care by ensuring they receive timely access to our services. The financial penalty incurred by the trust is approximately £200 per patient over six weeks. Callie, I've got one question. No, these, this is the cost, this is the money that is paid but is it by the, the GPs, Callie, or is it by the government for these procedures? The, the it's price. the government tariff. So it's the government tariff that is attributed to it, and then the, the, those procedures are bought by the local PCTs, the GP practices. Per case. This is the total cost per case. Callie, is there a different yeah. cost for stents, a colonic stents, or do we not cost that in? The stents will come under the therapeutic procedures. So uh, I, I'm going to upset you now, Kelly. So the stent itself costs £600, so we make a loss of the procedure? Yes. Okay. okay. Hmm. The average case is that, 468. So you're any therapeutic procedure, actually, you'll end up uh, losing money? Yeah. Callie's going to look into it. That's, now she knows that she's going to look into it. I didn't want to say much. Thanks, <laughs> Callie. <laughs> Thank you. So we're on total cost, Callie. Uh, upper GI, 374 for upper GI for the um, average cost. Yes. And Callie, can I just ask, just for interest, do, what do we charge for inpatient activity? In comes under the whole inpatient tariff. Okay. So there's one tariff set for inpatient activity? There is, yes. And that oh, thank you. Do you want the next slide? Hello? Kelly? Did you get that? I didn't, darling. Sorry. Do you want to say again? I says yes. There's one... Um, yeah, nursing support. One set tariff. Pardon? Nursing support. Nursing support, thank you. 
So our nursing team here are 100% patient focused and work 100% clinically, which increases the patient satisfaction and communication as they have a dedicated nurse throughout their journey, which enables efficient flow through the department. It also enhances the reputation of the department externally. So our admin team, our booking team, allow our nursing support to be fully dedicated to their patient during their stay and don't have to focus on any admin work. Excellent. Okay. Next slide, please. No management. So, how would our department work if uh, my role wasn't there, for instance? So, we've highlighted without the management structure, there would be the underutilisation of lists. So, there would be no control of how lists are booked, and there'd be no monitoring if lists are fully utilised. There'd be long delays for patients. There'd be no coordination of patient access. They'd not be booked in chronological order. There'd be no service development in the unit. So there'd be no themes and trends would be analysed and therefore no service developments such as business cases to extend the unit would be recognised as there would be not any resource to invest in this. There would be the reduction in clinical hours as nurses would have to spend more time booking patients and coordinating rotors rather than caring for the patients. And the pathway access for the patients would not be monitored and access to named consultant only procedures. Therefore, some patients may be booked into lists of wrong clinicians which would not have the skill mix to enable them to carry out their procedure, resulting in a wasted appointment and that patient having to make a second journey. Thank okay, you. so next slide, Paul. Questions. So, thanks. Questions. That was absolutely brilliant, Kelly. Well done. Uh, anybody got any questions at all? Ten, twelve points. A new gastroenterologist will come to the department. I or myself will work with you for the first three or four lists, will then set you a minimum of eight points per list, two points a colon, so four colons. You'd be allowed to do that for the next two to three months where further assessment is done, and then you'd be moved to a 12-point list where appropriate. Um, there are, we, the minimum is, is 12 points, um, and Callie would let you know that some of us will add extra to the list so he's 12 gastroscopy in the morning in the evening he's 10 is nine points yes yeah plus time for turnaround. Kelly, you, you don't have any um, details on turnaround, do you? Uh, I think the last time I was told, turnaround, once procedure out of mouth to the next patient, ready to go, but not in the room, was about seven minutes. Would that be fair? I think that's still applicable, but I can check because we've just done another audit. Brilliant. Of the turnaround times. So when you say you've done another audit, and this is something that these guys um, might not be aware of, what do what do you are expecting from this audit? What are you actually? What is the questions you're asking in the audit? So when we look when we do the audit, we look at the room productivity, so the turnaround time, how quick the consultant is getting that patient in the room, getting them over it, and also completing the report to when the next patient comes. So we can monitor the start time and finish time of the room the start and finish time of each individual patient to see if someone is going over the 15 minutes for a colon or 30 minutes, um, 15 minutes for a gas or 30 minutes for a colon. And we'll monitor that to see if the productivity is sufficient or if we need to invest. So we're looking at currently increasing our afternoon to 12 points as well. And that means we'll need to increase our nursing workforce to make the flow of the room better because at the minute it's our nursing restrictions which uh, reduces it down to 10 points. Excellent. 
So the, there are various, in each room there is a list that is done. There is a start time for the patient, then, they, then when the scope goes into the patient, so there's a time when the patient comes in the room, there's the time then when the scope goes into, is entered in, there is a time entered then when the scope is removed, there is a time then when the patient leaves the room, and then there is a time for when the room is ready for the next patient, and then it, the whole cycle starts again. And that is monitored. And Callie is one of the few people that absolutely loves stats and all this stuff, and she keeps it all down, she's shown <laughs> me, and I find it terribly tedious and boring. And all I say is, can I have this on my list? No. It's 15 minutes is allocated for the procedure. Okay. Yeah. But it, invariably, it's about 20 minutes. But it's up to, as a, an experienced endoscopist, 15 minutes is more than adequate. It's, uh, as Callie's alluded to, but I've been very politically correct to say, it is not about... Uh, it, the, just the endoscopist, sometimes the nurses aren't as efficient as other nurses. And that's not a slur on the nurses. Efficiency is what you're looking for. Well, how, um, the, 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 the determination of the price, the government has done yeah. 300, 400, is that standard? No. Callie, is it fair to say that the, the tariff price is based on a set level and then that's adjusted depending upon your immigrant level and your social economic group in the region? Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. And we also receive... You receive an extra levy. No. If you are predominantly middle class, English, anglicised, you will get the basic tariff. And then on top of that, if you've got more than a percentage of your population which is from lower socioeconomic group on, you know, receiving income support, if you've got immigrants, a percentage of your population is greater than what is the average, you, you then get a levy extra according to that. I don't know what it is. Kelly would be able to tell you percentages and all this, but what it means is, is that... These are not charges to the patient. The patient doesn't pay this money. So, so Kelly, the feeling here was that some of the people thought that the patient paid the £400? No, no, it's the government. It comes from the CCG. Yeah. So the patient doesn't, doesn't pay anything. Kelly, what would you think of the price, the tariffs? Do you think that the tariffs should be higher or lower to actually uh, balance our books? Are you there, Kelly? Hello? 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 Kelly, the question was, do, do you think the tariff is enough to balance our books? Yes, we're currently making a profit. We make a profit at that. I'm sure because you're doing a profit. We do. 30,000 procedures a year, am I right? Mm. I, yes, 50, we do yeah. a lot. That brings it to about 10.5 million pounds a year. Yeah. That's what you're making. If you, mm. if you make an average at yeah. Endoscopy is a very uh, financial producing yeah. so industry. So, so, you know, mm. Are you, you okay for right? time, Kelly, or do you need to go? Just okay. Sorry? Are you okay for time still? Yeah, I need to leave in about 15 minutes. No worries. So, I'll talk to you about the 15 minutes later. It's just that Kelly's time is precious. Have you got... Oh, yeah. Anybody got any questions? Kelly, you've been absolutely superb. Thank you very much for your time. That was superbly clear, accurate, and exactly what we discussed. Okay, thank you. Thank Have you a good very day. Much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.
Thanks. While you're getting the next uh, post online, so this is not a standard uh, UK system. This is mainly in, in, in is it is it England only, and Wales is not. Wales, so Wales has a different a, system. Wales has a different system. They have a health board system. Okay. And, uh, Sajda. So, just to show you quickly, I don't ever show you this one yesterday. So she went on and explained about the timetable. She, she also explained about the 12 stands to the number of points. The question I wanted to ask you was, this females only, and the operators as well as the receivers... Sharon Hudson's a female. Um, no, what do you mean? No, no, what is, is this the list of no, the only? Right, no, weekends. Weekends only, ladies? Weekends because they haven't got enough staff. So in the morning it's females only. In the afternoon it would be males. So, so, so they, they change whichever one it is. So start with females only. Now the thing is, I, women are harder to scope in the UK. There's a lot going off in there, you know. So I prefer to do them in the morning. Get them out of the way. The easy ones in the afternoon. I agree, women are difficult. That, that, that's what I agree. <laughs> <laughs> scoping or no scoping? I'm just talking about scoping. <laughs> so, and then she went on to say about responsibilities with the admin team. And then she went on, this is the costings. So, what she actually said was a basic call on price is 388. That's been reduced. Last year it was 450, but the government has reduced it. The gas flexi is more, yet it takes less time to do. Total time. Now, the, that's for the points, but the, we'll come to it in a minute. So she's got a demand for points when you actually look at this for slots of 795 a month. She's got available 356, but the difference is 439. Then what she, her job is is to come along and balance up the requirement of points and the list can be done. And at the end of this month that she's took, there's one point in every day. So then tell me something. These extra lists are obviously costing you a lot more. Yeah, I'm saying yes, the health authority is costing a lot more. Where is this <coughs> only getting still? Even your extra lists are not getting any extra money. So but if they don't, if I've got they are penalized. If you've got 12 so that's how they're the saving money. And they breach, it will cost £3,000. For that one list. So it's cheaper to pay me £1,000 to scope them and you save £2,000. So not only that, but you're also penalised, right? Yeah, no, that's the penalty. So £200 per procedure. Per, per, but, per and then, it, then there's a, if there's a block of 10, then there's a big fee that 10 grand that follows that. Fine. The fines are the. Oh, and then we come to the, the pricing. So you look at the pricing, the, and I asked about the therapeutic your information, the step cost is £600 and the actual whole procedure is 485 That's my time, that's the stent, that's the procedure, that's disinfection, that's the three nurses, whoever else is in the room. So you should stop doing therapeutic So we make a lot. But as she's told you, we make money. Yeah, I know. Because we See, make I it up on the others. <laughs> <laughs> and then I took an average and said ten and a half million pounds is what you earn. And then she went to ask her to explain yeah. why her role is important and what would happen. I think in, in a system that you have, obviously, this role becomes very important. But, yeah. Uh, I just wanted you to see how our system is operated compared to your system. But then you're doing 30,000 procedures as well. Sir, of course. Yeah. These procedures are mostly day care procedures. So you get treated and then. Say again. We have day care procedures. So now, and you. No, no, this is a monthly requirement. That's the monthly. Yes. So, the next person, I'll, br I'll bring it up in a few moments, is how we provide endoscopy in the UK. It's not just with consultants, right? There's nurses. So we, we actually train other people to do endoscopy. Training is not what I think it should be. Nationally, we have 
nurses who do endoscopy, we have registrars who do endoscopy all independently, we have consultants who do endoscopy all independent. If a nurse makes a mistake, perforate someone, they are judged against their peer. So regardless, if I put on a scope in someone, right, I'm judged against that. Sad is judged against me. If you're a nurse and you're doing it, you are judged against Sad, you're judged against me. So you shouldn't be doing something, so as an endoscopist. So I have a little bit of an irritation about nurse endoscopist, medical endoscopist, non-medical endoscopist. Now, because of the demand, there's another system that they've actually decided to do, which I find quite distasteful. And they've suddenly done a fast track system where they believe they can teach you from day one to day end in six months to do endoscopy, be it colon, flexi or gastroscopy. Just six months. In six months. And take you from the streets, having never done it before, and teach you. Non nurse, non medical, anybody. Anybody. So they enter in, and after six months, you do it at master's level for six months, and then you walk away. Garbage. I've blocked it. It's not happening in my hospital. No way. Not going to happen. If you've got a medical background, if you come ODP, or you're... I'm a little bit more sympathetic, but I say it'll take you a year. There's no one that's going to shortcut this, in my opinion. But the government has put millions behind it because they say that we need another three to 400 endoscopists by year end. So... <laughs> so the person who's going to talk to you next is going to be Sharon. I know. She's just texted me to say do it on her iPad. That's what she's just asked. That's why that helps. I'll just see if she's logged in on her.